Hi, and welcome to WPYP TV Manchester. At today's show, the theme is Slacker Movies. And WPYP TV, We Pick Your President, is proud to have the two biggest slackers, not biggest, the two premier slackers in Queen City today. Elite. Gonzo and Kyle. I think we have potential to take the crown, though. For, for Forever and ever. Forever and ever. That's, you are working on it. See, the problem with being a slacker is uh, you have to work diligently, but that's not what slackers do, so we have to... Oh, it, Kyle, don't look hard. at me. Look at the camera. Nobody, you know, think, forget about me. I can't forget about you. Well, that's the, pro that, well, that's the problem with other people. Like Dude, you Victor have a robot arm. Like Victoria Sullivan. Uh, who, well, How's she doing? She pulled a hat trick. Uh, she's lost, uh, lost her third municipal election in a row. Yeah, but she's trying. And oh, jeez. How you change your tune when the camera's on. Speaking of tunes, do you mind, do you mind <laughs> if I honor my cat in song? As long as you directly look at the camera and belt it out to Man Manchester, the so Queen City. So I've recently lost my best friend cat, named Robot, and uh, this one's for you, big guy. Remember you Will you remember me? Hey. <laughs> Pass you by. Come on, buddy. Belt, oh, it. belt it out. Anyway, you get the gist. <laughs> I thought you were going to sing it out Weep there, baby. Weep not for the memory. That's embarrassing. I'm, you guys no. ever lose a cat? I'm waiting. Give it a try it again. Kyle, we're both going to shut up. I'm not going to meow, and we're going to let the big guy here. I'm so afraid to love. Nah, did, you know what? You ruined it, John. You did the meow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking away. You did the meow. <laughs> give it, and, give uh, it. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking at our other guest, Eric Belcher. I'm not going to say a word. Remember good times that we had Let them slip away from us, things got bad Clearly I first saw you smiling in the sun One, See, now Eric Pritchard looks bored <laughs> What? You're not, you're not much of a... I Brandon! I don't think you loved your cat. Start it over. <laughs> no, I think we... What, we you know I, what? Whoa. This is it. No, uh, we'll quit. We'll quit. Kyle just said I didn't love my cat. We will quit a little early. Me and Kyle will leave, and we'll we'll ca we'll KO Eric Pilcher. And like in the last five, six minutes, yeah. you can be alone in the studio. And I'll do Coco Cabana. <laughs> You can do whatever you want. We'll give you the last 10 minutes of the show. Is that all right, Kyle? I, w I would love that. We will leave. To, uh, okay, and you, Brent, uh, warn us, Brendan. Give us like at uh, 4.48. I'm going to say 3. Uh, we didn't change the clock here at the studio. They call that a teaser. 4.48. We will wind up. Kyle and I will leave. And then Gonzo can, you know. Not if Eric Pritchard is looking like that. Like, he's well, bored. Eric's not going to be there either. Right. Eric can't even see you. If he's gone, I'll do it. Eric can't see you. The <laughs> he can only see me on camera. I can see him. Um, can I just say a quick thing about Robot, if I may? Okay, we're going to give him the last 10 minutes, and you can eulogize your cat. And the one that smiled in the sun. Listen, song. here's the deal. When you lose a cat, it, people go, oh, it's just a cat. But no, this cat was a lot to me. And I thought I was doing the whole show on the cat today. Where did you get that idea? I just thought I was. We, we uh, told you that we're going to do slacker movies. I told everyone in the cat community. Because uh, Kyle uh, astounded the audience last week when he said, uh, Eric, we're going to, Eric Pilcher, we're going to bring you in. Eric, last Eric. week. Eric looks like he has the a bunch of cats. astounding thing. He has a Staffordshire Terrier. I'm sure he's got. Staffordshire Terrier. The most astounding thing happened where Kyle, who is one of the premier slackers here in the Queen City, if not the... He gets to Gonzo, drink beer? He, yes, because he's at home. And uh, 
<laughs> you mentioned that you were a fan of Polly Shore, which if <laughs> I had a dental plate, it would have popped out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, tell us what Polly Shore means to you, and then Eric, who is a great film critic, will 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 enlighten us about slacker movies. Um, I mean, there's so many great things about Polly Shore. It, c can Eric hear me? Eric, can you hear us? Absolutely. Uh, uh, Brendan, we, uh, the uh, sound here is a little low. Yeah, I know. Is that uh, okay? <laughs> oh, um, oh, okay. Maybe if you turn that fan off. All right. Um, should Eric? I turn the fan off? No, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. Uh, Eric? Can you hear me? It's okay. Hey, Brett, it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty hot in here. Um, so, yeah, there's there's many um, positives to Pauly Shore, obviously. There are. Can you name them? Um, great hair, number one. Son-in-law is great. Son-in-law is <laughs> great. No, I was actually being uh, sarcastic, but the... Uh, I don't know. Uh, and Finland, great film. Cool body. Biodome. Biodome. You do the buddy thing again. Cool body. Uh, do it better. Come on. What about G.I. Jane? Uh, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Polly Shore was in G.I. Jane. He was in an army movie. In the army now. In the army. G.I. Jane was Viggo Mortensen and uh, what's her name? Bruce Willis is uh, artificially enhanced. Demi. Uh, Demi Moore. Aragon Who? was in G.I. Jane? Yes. Demi Moore was. Aragon. Well, Viggo Moore. I know him yeah. as Viggo Mortensen. He used to go around L.A. Uh, uh, in poetry readings. It's Viggo. That sounds awesome. Yeah. But See, yeah. My, my friend Jocelyn, they used to do uh, poetry readings. To Holly him. Shore was a son of a great uh, Mitzi oh. Shore, which is probably why he had a break. I'm looking at the G.D. camera. Put the pen down. Which is why I think he got a break in Hollywood. Well, he, she let him be in the comedy store. Hey, Eric, uh, tell us about what. What's your take on Pauly Shore? Oh boy, um, he has one. He has one trick, and that one trick he does very, very well. Uh, he does play the slacker role very, very well. Certainly, wouldn't expect him to be in any dramatic films by any stretch but the movies do get uh, dramatic I, throughout I the him process from an episode of married with children when he was uh a manager of a burger joint that al bundy had to work at <laughs> i missed that episode i saw it yes it's when uh it, he was uh it, the place was called burger track and he whenever al put the burger down the ramp he had to say whoosh and Polly Shore would be like Bundy you didn't say the whoosh <laughs> he did <laughs> so this is like uh Polly Shore like say his signature role like uh with Lawrence Olivier Hamlet or The Entertainer or Jack Nicholson Randall Patrick McMurphy uh his his signature role was playing a manager of a burger place and we can say well i would say his signature role if i had a say would have to be encino Absolutely. man oh encino man i only remember that because like, the other the real actor was in it brendan fraser right brendan fraser i never saw it um also there's one other um okay kyle take it away uh, he was this is a, your man this is, this is my man it's yeah uh -huh. yeah shh like Kyle uh, do his thing. He was in Lord of the Rings. Um, can you can you help me? Yeah, I have thirty. Who was oh, Lord Brandon of the Lord? Fraser? He no, was no, the, the other guys. one. The other one. Why well, we're not talking about Viggo Mortensen? Though. No, not Viggo Mortensen. Brandon he was a Fraser. Hobbit. He was Frodo's best friend. Oh, you Polly's best friend. Oh, I know who you're talking yeah, about. Sean Patrick, Patrick, Elijah Wood. Come on, Brendan, help us. Sean Austin. Sean Austin, thank yes. you. Yes. Um, Pat Aston. Patty, yes. uh, Duke, uh, but we're not talking about John Aston. Yes, he was also an insinuant man. He me. was. Yes, he yes, was. He was. Yes, he was. Um, Polly Shore is probably short because Sean Aston is short, and you don't want actors like tow towering over. Well, he you. played a Hobbit, so yeah. Yeah. Naturally, he would be short. That, that's true. Yeah, because Viggo is actually tall. Uh, he didn't play a Hobbit. Biodome was another Polly Shore hit. Oh, uh, uh, well, you know, it's, it's baby it's, steps, right? Can we get through it? Yeah, Kyle is, this is Kyle's, 
This is Kyle's day. Okay. Which, you know, I didn't be, know that. I didn't know that. So and it will be his day me. tomorrow, uh, next week. Too, I didn't know that. We're talking about Polly Shore. When we get to Adam Sandler. Gonzo, Proceed. When we get to Adam Sandler, we will, uh, we will call on your great wisdom. Can you just ride the wave, buddy? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kyle. Over so, to you again. No, again, I, I, I think those are three great films. I think it was like Casablanca. <laughs> um, bio, biodome. <coughs> One flew over the cuckoo's nest. And send your man. Um, yeah, those are top three. Top it, four. Well, didn't you just say four? I just said four. Okay. What would you say, Eric Pilcher? In regards, I I w- I kind of was shocked to hear Encino Man and Casablanca spoken in the same uh, statement. Um, I it's mean, a hot take. I understand that. Um, you could you could throw the Green Mile in there. That's fine. Well, who played uh, the woman role in Encino oh. Man? Because you know it was Bogey, <laughs> one of the greatest uh, movie stars ever, and Ingrid Bergman, who was a great great star too. Gazungas. Well, Ingrid Bergman is not known for Gazungas. She won three Oscars. That's what they who said was the woman in Encino Man? There must have been some gal. There was a love interest. Uh, games here. Robert Sweeney, Dang. who was Dang. played by Megan Ward. Who who was it, uh, Eric? Uh, the character's name was Robin Sweeney, and she was played by Megan Ward. Megan Ward. She must have been somebody's uh, girlfriend or mistress or casting couch decision. Never heard <laughs> she of her. Was in, uh, a lot of the early 90s slacker films like Joe's Apartment, PCU. And Encino Man. She was in them? Yes. Now, Eric, what was the first uh, Slacker movie? Would it be Slackers? Whew, that's a tough one because I, I actually, before coming on, did research about it. Um, and I, what I have come up with is I believe that Slacker films are kind of an offshoot of the raunchy comedies that came out in the 70s like Animal House mm. and uh and Porky's except it's a narrower scope it's not an ensemble cast it's one or two guys yeah one or two degenerates yeah so uh, i mean i would say the slacker genre really kind of started with Animal House which was a uh, which a cre- he said that the we can't really hear him. Uh, Animal House, he said. We can't no, really I'm hear him, uh, Brandon. Well, this is good as Brandon can do. Is it? He doesn't want echo. Can you do better, Brandon? Just a little. <laughs> no. So, um, what, I get, what's, what what do you think the definition of a slacker film is? What's the definition of a slacker film, Eric? He can hear us. We just can't hear you so well. Uh. For me, the definition of a slacker film would be, one, the central character has to be a slacker. Otherwise, it does not work. Um, and there has to be, and, they, and the person has to be likable. Uh, the term lovable loser comes into play mm. quite a bit. So there's a... So, I, that's lovable another... Lovable losers, like, like you two. Um, we wouldn't I wouldn't that. go that far. I think Kyle and Gonzo are gentlemen and scholars. I appreciate that, Eric. Thank uh, you, we're more Eric. comeback kids. Thank you, Eric. Um, Wayne's World oh. was voted best slacker movie of all time. Would you consider Wayne's World a slacker film, uh, Eric? Absolutely, one hundred percent. I would, because I again, the, I don't know if you can consider sorry, Wayne's World two a slacker film though, because they kind of make it big. Yeah. So I don't know if they can really be slackers anymore. Right, but well, you, like if you're living in your parents' basement, but you you yeah. still have you're a likable personality, you have, you have something going on for you. Don't they usually come out on top anyway? Though it's like the underdog kind of wins slacker roles. So. Well, we'll go back to Animal House, which came out when I was 18, and it was huge to uh, my generation. But also people like. Uh, Older people, and what is the New Hampshire connection with uh, Animal House? Do you guys know that it's overrated? <laughs> <laughs> no, that the the college is actually it's based on Dartmouth and an uh. actual uh, 
uh, animal house fraternity at Dartmouth College. I did not know that, actually. Because the people at National Lampoon, which was, you know, a humor magazine, I read it when I was in college, were all from Harvard or Dartmouth. They were all from Ivy League schools. And they changed comedy, uh, particularly in motion picture comedy. Chevy Chase was part, you know, a lot of them became staff writers on Saturday Night Live. And American humor was, and to a great degree still is, Jewish humor, Jewish American humor, which it was about an underdog, but it was like light in your face. It was in your face humor, uh, a, a, a attack, you know, attack humor, slap you in the face. American humor it was, like when I was a kid, mostly Jewish American humor. In fact, the greatest comedian of that time who influenced everybody was Lenny Bruce. But what they say about National Lampoon and Animal House and, what came, and Saturday Night Live, which came later, it was wasps and Irish Catholics. And they were very well educated. And it was a more ironic type of humor. Uh, you know, you're watching people. They play it straight. But the absurdity is like in the situation. And if you think about Animal House, you know, it's a... Uh, the wa it was the colleges it was a was white Anglo-Saxon Protestant or what we call New England Yankee uh, type of situation and they're kind of uh, reacting against that and of course Bluto who was the great John Belushi was the ethnic role in the thing Blue Blutarski you know the Polish guy the uh, what he was probably now that Eric was talking the first and ultimate slacker and remember they're being dumped on but they and as you said but the uh with slacker movies they came out on top in the end now didn't belushi overdo it in that movie oh, yeah, yeah but it was hilarious yeah see i never found that stuff funny i don't know i can't find one movie back in the 70s that's funny what about you uh uh this is your show uh kyle oh, yeah. did you like animal house oh we have an incoming call I forgot about that Hi, uh, and welcome to WPYP-TV. We're not talking about Vic Victoria Sullivan today and her ignominious loss. And this is her. Uh, the only things we're talking okay. about are uh, slacker yes, movies I, I have a question and dead for you, cats. Mr. Hopwood. This is yes. Jim in uh, Manchester. Yeah. Hey, hey, Jim. Would you consider the Three Stooges, the Bowery Boys, and Abbott and Costello slackers? You know what? We'll, we'll put that to Eric, Okay. And thank you for the call, and we are going to put that to Eric Pilcher. Thanks for the call. Oh, man, the pressure. Uh, I would definitely consider the Three Stooges slackers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there's any other way about it. Uh, they would have to be slackers. Abbott and Costello seem to have more ambition. So I'm on the fence with them. I don't know if I would say they would be slackers. <laughs> yeah. I, never, I liked Abbott and Costello when I was a kid, but as I grew up, I didn't like them much. And you know, uh, uh, Costello, Luke Costello, based his character on Curly. What do you guys, do you guys like the Three Stooges? Because I, I love Wouldn't them. Wouldn't that be slapstick humor? Well, that was slapstick humor, but that was also Jewish humor, too. Uh, they came out of vaudeville, um. and... Did they I were like contemporaries the with the Marx Brothers. Yes would be the answer. I like the Stooges. What about you, Kyle? I have, I have, I have some questions. I'm not, I've, I've seen the Three Stooges, but I've, um, do they own real estate or a home? Do they, are they living in their parents' basement? Do they live together? Well, I don't they, really know the background. They live videos. underground. In one episode, they live under their truck when they're repairmen. Uh, yeah, they're like The 60. one, a, pl a plumbing we will go. Moses a jerk. Mo is a jerk. Mo is not a jerk. Mo is a jerk. Um, you you very much act like Mo at times. You know what, Larry? I'll give it to him. I think they are slackers. But do you I think like they're more the aggressive? Do you enjoy their? I I it it's that wasn't at the time. I'm sure I would have loved it. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about no. Yeah, they're it's, still it's, huge. it's okay. I mean, I could slap Gonzo in the face right now on TV. Would no, that be you funny? Can't, no. I said I could. Oh, I'm not oh, going I to. I can't do that. <laughs> but would it? Is would he it like be Mo? Funny? Would it be funny? I don't know. No, it wouldn't be it's, funny. It's, I feel like it's kind of a cop out now. You know what I mean? But it was innovative at the time. Right, that's what I'm saying. Times it changing. was of its time. It came out of the 20s and 30s. Of, yeah. of a, uh, it was a type of Jewish American humor that was pitched towards immigrants, many of whom couldn't even speak English. 
because they do dialect humor too, just like the Marx Brothers. And <laughs> then the Marx Brothers were Jewish. You had Chico, who was uh, uh, Groucho is probably one of the greatest, greatest comic actors in history. But Chico is playing an Italian, even though he's Jewish. They uh, ethnic humor back in the days of vaudeville was very big and it lasted it, it went into the movies too but they would do uh uh shtick you know these comic things about like language because they're in a florida in the coconuts they're in a florida land deal and they're talking about a viaduct and of course uh chico is supposed to be italian say viaduct viaduct now, why a duck? Yeah, it's not that. Oh, I, every, it's it's great, but it is of its time, and uh, some of the greatest writers, Pulitzer Prize winners like George S. Kaufman, wrote the dialogue. S. J. Perlman. These are people that don't write slacker movies, though. You know. Can I say a slacker movie that I think is right up there? Right, because I think the, we have answered that sorry, question, Brian. Eric. Right. The Police Academy yes. series. That's a slacker no, the movie. Police Academy's not slack. How is it not? It's its own genre. What you, is a police academy movie a uh, slacker? I would say it is. They're Ooh. slacker cops. Yeah, they're Ooh. slackers. They're misfits that became policemen and overcame L.A.'s thieves. I just don't like that what? actor uh, who uh, was in all sorts of movies. in the Gutenberg? Now he's gone. Steve Gutenberg. You don't like Gutenberg? <laughs> and then he shaved his head and became a game show host, I think. I didn't know that part. C Carl, you seem to be there very studiously wanting to say something. I'm just waiting <laughs> for my time. To it's your show. It's, it's your show. show. No, guys, it's a team effort, okay? Do you think Pauly Shore, Carl, was any way influenced by the Three Stooges? I think Pauly is his own... Um, Answer the question. I'm trying to. Or we're going to make you, we're going to put you on the Victoria Sullivan beat. Answer What's that beat? The question. Well, you're going to, her next No, Polly's his own entity. Um, try, and get the, try and get in the head of Polly Shore. You can't, you can't do it, but. Um, okay. Let's ask is no. Eric. Is Polly Shore sui genres? Is he of his own genre? Ooh. Ooh. I think. That's a tough, another tough question because when you think of Pauly Shore, you almost automatically go to Slacker. So, um, with maybe a touch of stoner comedy Stone. in there, lovable. So, um, is stoner I, comedy? I don't know if I would say. I believe that he created his own characteristics. I would think he was influenced by people before him but I think it, I think you could get away with saying Pauly Shore movies as a subgenre. okay now once again I was in college I loved we loved Cheech and Chong movies stoner movies I don't consider them slackers of course they are why, no, they're why not slackers what's the difference they're like because <laughs> they were Cheech and Chong because when I was a kid we'd grow up they, we had their albums it's well you're going by answer. name recognition yeah there, would they if they didn't have the comedy bit? Would they not be slackers? Weren't they like? Ugh. But stoner, does sto I would think stoner. Do you think stoner? The, the the ultimate stoners were Cheech and Chong. I mean, before they made hit yeah. movies, mm -hmm. and my father loved their movies too because my father liked to smoke pot ever since they they used to grow weed uh, in the navy. So did robot the garden and, and on a know, boat. No, they okay. have barracks on uh, that they go to after they come home, and it wasn't illegal then. But uh, my father loved Cheech and Chong. I grew up with them. Uh, are Cheech and Chong slackers, Eric? No, no. Cheech and Chong are very ambitious. Ooh. That's right. They're, they're dealers. So, so yes, no, but they're also they're consumers, very, uh, which is it's um, that's not a financially savvy movie to make, a savvy acumen. move to make. Yeah, and they also go the wrong way at some point. I would consider more of like a, Tom Green would be in the in the Pauly Shore uh, aspect of this. Well, we're talking. Uh, this I'll is I'll my have, few minutes. This is his. Okay. We'll get back to Tom Green, which I think I should there walk no on go down to, to uh, uh, see Matt Connaughton and now when we talk Tom Green, we're really getting to the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> but. Yes, I, I don't think that Cheech and Chung were slackers. Because remember in Nice Dreams, they're dealing, and which caused all sorts of trouble. They're dealing out of that ice cream truck. To support their own habit, though. I like your Tom Green well, point. 
you know, they were also there to spread the joy, you know. How about this influence on Polly Shore? Bobcat Gold with <laughs> that a, a niche type of comedy like Polly Nietzsche, Shore had like a, had a like thing a, where he goes the weasel yeah with and cool body <laughs> like that was his thing. Bobcat did that as well. He was in that movie Hot to Try. He was a one trick pony. Uh, you can address the camera because I'm I really, talking to Eric. I barely know who you're talking to. <laughs> I'm talking to Eric. <laughs> Eric's uh, oh, oh, well. I'm over there now. You talk to that Eric, and I'll talk to this Eric. Okay, uh, Kyle, uh, let's have it. You actually believe that Cheech and Chong were slackers? Um, I'm not saying they're slackers, but like, I, I, I need to know their how much money do they make before taxes? I don't think they ever declared taxes. Remember, they had the money, and then Pee Wee Herman stole it. Oh, and nice right. dreams. Where's Pee Wee? following all this so well, peewee herman it was in the uh ear the early uh uh cheech and chong movies remember he was the uh, clerk where he called he thinks uh, i think they're iranians i didn't know that paul rubin was in that oh yeah he appears in a couple of the cheech and chong movies which get increasing after increasingly were bad by the way yeah of course. Yeah, like by them. the corsican brothers it's like oh, so you were saying these are cheech and chong are actual businessmen well they were Pot well, dealers. first of all, uh, Cheech, they were ethnics. Uh, Cheech Marin was what was called Chicano relevant. then. No, it wasn't. Mexican-American, which that was unique. You didn't have Mexican-Americans except, you know, like cowboy movies where as comic relief. And he was Chinese-American. They were, and they're from L.A., so they were kind of their own. East L.A. Oh, that's right, born in East L.A. And they were well, actually, uh, Tommy Chung's from Canada, uh, Vancouver. But I guess he man and uh, because Cheech Marin uh, evaded the draft, so he went up to Canada, and that's where they met. Where Tommy was managing a strip club, but they were the first people that actually talked about marijuana and smoking. And that, that is very routine. pioneering. Da Dave, uh, Dave's not here, man. You know, you're, you're, even a ten-year-old loved that. So we barely knew. Uh, what about in Back was. to the Future? I think they were trying to be called a slacker film by the principal calling Michael J. Fox a slacker. Are we bringing up the Chris, the the pain of Kyle over Christopher? I'd like Lloyd to ask. Now? I'd like to ask we Eric. About Christopher Lloyd. To we, we don't want to bring up Back to the Future. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd disappointed Kyle. He's Kyle. a slacker. Kyle, tell uh, Eric Pilcher what Christopher Lloyd did to you. Um, hi, Eric. This is Kyle Clayton. Um, so somebody mm -hmm. paid X, X amount of money. Um, I forget what the it app was called. It's 200 bucks, right? It was about $200 um, for me to have a FaceTime interview. Shh. Yes, it was me. Don't let my parents here. Um, for me to have a two-minute FaceTime interview with Christopher Lloyd, and he never showed up. Cameo. Cameo is the app. Thank you. Isn't um, that sad? Do you do Cameo, Eric? I... I do not do cameo. Um, I, um, I would, I considered it giving it a gift to some people, but it's just so expensive, and I, I'd be heartbroken if I gave it as a gift to someone and paid all that money, and they're like, "Wow, that was a letdown." Well, well and then the person doesn't even call you. I you, was going to talk about the right. one uh, with Ukraine and Russia with him. <laughs> because everyone wants to talk about uh, Back to the Future, so I was going to mix it up. I thought it would have been a good bit, but um, I have I, I have credit for it now, so it, the money is not gone. Ooh, you mean you can't get the money back? Though? No, I can't get my tangible Let's cash back. Let's get Shannon Doherty. Jesus, what, you could get her for like, if it's 200 bucks, you could really get her for the entire hour. It's a cool concept cameo, but two for two I've been let down. Drew Bledsoe messed yeah, up Yeah, Drew Bledsoe me. did mess up. And Who'd want to talk to that ass? Who wouldn't? Um, I wouldn't. Oh, Tom Brady. I don't Sorry, know. it's not James Cagney. Tom Brady oh, would be in the four figures realm, I would think. Go ahead, Eric. Oh, would you want to talk <laughs> to... <laughs> Tom Brady would probably be a thousand for like five minutes. Do you want to talk to Drew Bledsoe? <laughs> uh, negative. Negative. I really don't have anything to say to Drew. Right. But you're not in a different. You're the, a different geographic. The no, he's a big Patriots fan. The point is, we're not talking about Christopher Lloyd. Which ever again? And he has a time machine. You think he'd be on time? I don't you know. think is so? Blood so a, a slacker. 
Yes. <laughs> no, yes, he's he not. Is. He's ambitious. I, I don't think you can call Drew Bledsoe a slacker because he almost died on the football field. <laughs> he makes wine, too. I hope he punctures his other lung. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Wow. As we, I'm just we'll, I love Drew. As we get back on topic, do you know that, Eric, that Adam Sandler is from Manchester, New Hampshire? You have mentioned that, and so is Matt Connerton. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think Adam Sandler is one of the greatest slacker actors of all time. I mean, although he doesn't have the quantity of films, he only has like three or four that I think could quantify as slacker films. There, I think those four are very good. And yes. what are they? Um, another one is that I think played the slacker very well is Chris Farley. Yeah. Oh, I like Chris Farley. Interesting. What was Adam Sandler, the four slacker film? It is your airheads right there. Um, I would say, I would qualify his four slacker films as Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, uh, in uh, the animated film Eight Crazy Nights, he was more of a jerk than a slacker, but had slacker tendencies. In one open for debate, I would say The Wedding Singer, he played a slacker. What about Big Daddy? I would say Big Daddy as well, yeah. Oh, then five. Yes, absolutely Big Daddy. Well, he got his foot run over by a mail, a mail truck. Right. Now, one of the worst movies ever was when he got... Hit by a shovel. Like, bro, Don't you bring Little Nicky into this? <laughs> little <great> Nicky. <laughs> Could you? Would you consider that one? Because he's kind of running on the coattails of his dad, Satan. Little is Little <laughs> Nicky, which the only reason to watch would be Harvey Keitel, a slacker <laughs> movie. Uh, no, I. I don't know what I would call yeah, Little. What, what coming of age? Yeah. Is that what do they call those? A farce. I don't know. It's a strange movie, and it's all off on its own in a way. I don't. I mean, you it, don't honestly. get Harvey Keitel. Uh, you know, was a, was a fascinating actor. Kevin Neal uh, to three. join up, unless it was a, a good script. Henry Winkler. Oh, Henry Winkler. Covered in bees. Henry Winkler is one of the nicest people you could ever meet. Yeah, sorry, way. Henry. Oh, you know him? No, I know people that have interviewed him. Oh, uh, here, hearsay, Your Honor. No, but you know, sustained you know people that. I'll allow it. Say he was a very, very nice person. Yeah, Which nice. one was he in? I watched, saw that out. It's the Water Boy. Henry Wink was in the Water. Is the Water Boy slacker movie, right? Yes, he was the co He was one of the coaches in the Water Boy. That's the only Adam Sandler movie I ever watched that I could really I could watch. Because I was trying to tell Gonzo a story. My father, this tough old World War II vet, he calls me up one day. He says, I, this actor, Adam Sandler, he's, I hear he's from Manchester, New Hampshire. I said, oh, yeah, he is, Dad. And he said, I was uh, going through, you know, the cable, because you know, Dad had you know, the 200-channel package, which is common now, but not so then. So he said, all of a sudden, I started watching this movie, uh, and Darren McGavin was in it, and uh, Adam Sandler is playing his son. My father was, like, astounded, because uh, he loved movies. He loved David Lynch. He liked he liked all sorts of independent movies. He was really into, and we would talk about you know movies to watch. And my stepmother, uh, you know, watching some of these independent movies, it would drive her crazy. She did not like Blue Velvet stuff like that. He said, "I was watching. I think it's Happy Gilmore." Yeah. Ha or is it Billy Madison with when Darren he goes back Madison? to school, or if he plays golf? No, I guess it's the Darren McGavin. Who's what was the one Darren McGavin was? No, no, you're talking about Happy uh, Aaron Billy Gavin Madison. Gavin was Billy Madison. Okay, so my father's watching Billy Madison. He said, John, it was like watching a car wreck. It was the worst movie I've ever seen. No. And I have my remote in my hand, and I'm simply unable to, you know, move my fingers and change the change. channel. He said, I've never seen anything so bad. I was mesmerized. And I couldn't help him because I, I think Darren McGavin was a hell of an actor. <laughs> but uh, maybe that's why he started watching it or whatever. But uh, I think, I've never seen that movie. I think Rotten Tomatoes would agree with your dad because Adam Sandler movies get about 4% on the... Really? Yeah, they don't do well on those, but they're way better than that. They've been plummeting um, since the 2000s, but his early stuff was... But they still get bad okay. scores. Okay. I'm saying okay. Let the experts talk. 
Sorry. Eric, I'm what sorry, are you Eric. saying? The the problem with Rotten Tomatoes is the the people that are on there that get that give the critiques and everything look at all films under the same light. They look at they want films to have this great artistic merit to them. Mm. And if they don't, they just eviscerate them. And it's unfair and unfortunate because do films like the American Pie films, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, Porky's, Animal House have major artistic merit? Not precisely, but they're entertaining yeah. to a lot of people. So I think their ratings are grossly unfair when they rate movies like that because they're they're reviewing it as if it's Citizen Kane when they should just look at it as it did it entertain me for 90 minutes to two hours. But you have to look at the audience they're addressing as well. Like Obviously, some looking for something sophisticated like Schindler's List. Don't watch Happy Gilmore. It's well, Rotten Tomatoes is an aggregate of reviews by reviewers. And when a movie comes out, they're, they're going to dump on something like that. Right. And what, was the, what was the new uh, Adam Sandler movie that came out on Netflix? Like the, the newest Hidden one that actually. Hidden Gems. Hidden Gems. I think, I, I, I haven't seen it, but I've heard that's. It did well. It did, I think, oh, it did pretty well. Hidden Gems is amazing. It, Adam Sandler should have won Best Actor last year. Really? And he's won, uh, he's oh. won the worst one, right? What's Razzie. whatever that's called? The Razzies, yeah. A couple times. Now, a, a good friend of mine uh, who uh, it is not like crappy movies thought Spanglish was very good. It that wa was It was good. He was in that. I, yes. I'm a fan of Punch Drunk Love. Very good. Oh, I wanted to see that, but I didn't. Yeah, you should. Oh, yeah, because good. that's not the Adam Sandler fan wheelhouse of... Right, that's not an Adam yes. Sandler movie. film. Mm -hmm. um, people yeah, he's not complain doing about it and they don't like it. Now, William Goldman won two Academy Awards as a screenwriter for... Uh, for, uh, yes, you're in a movie. We're talking about movies now. No, you're just so it. knowledgeable, John. William Goldman won two Oscars. He wrote the original screenplay of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and then he won an Oscar for adapting All the President's Men. But he used to be a very astute uh, student of Hollywood, and he would write an annual column before the Oscars about the state of the industry. And he said that at one point, when Adam Sandler, and Adam Sandler was like the biggest star in in Hollywood in the sense that he might be not the number one box office star, which is Tom Cruise, but a Tom Cruise movie cost over $100 million to make. This guy was bringing in these huge grosses, making these films that were only like for $10 million or so, and they returned so much money that he was real, the real box office champ. Mm -hmm. It didn't, you know, because Tom Cruise makes some real junk too. He used to have to be dragged off to his movies, but let's, let's not get into that. Sure. Uh, you know, women like him. But uh, well, Maverick. Uh, Men like him. Any, uh, if I ever have to watch that damn uh, Top Gun, you don't Top like Gun again, I'll, 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 I'll strangle somebody. You don't have the need for speed? <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, and then Adam Sandler, the movie started going up in budget, and he started branching out to try to be a real actor and use his talent. And he stopped. The, the grosses stopped going down, which reminds me of what Marlon Brando said. Marlon Brando, when he's in The Godfather, that was the top grossing film of all time without inflation for briefly before Jaws, you know, it beat, sound the music, everything he said. The, Brando always said, the higher the gross, the worse the movie, which is not true about The Godfather, which is my pick for the greatest American movie of all time. But uh, it's strange that uh, Sandler making these movies, which I, my father or myself thought unwatchable, was, was the biggest, really, f thing in, in Hollywood. Well, they all and try And then he got it. more sophisticated in his popularity. Don't all comedians go that route at one point to try it out? Yeah, that's probably true. I don't think he cares, is the thing. Oh, he must he, care. He doesn't care what you got, what we think. It's like, I'm going to well, make a bunch of movies with my friends. You don't make Spanglish. Or no, you don't make grown-ups. You no, do not make grown-ups. No, ever. I'm not even talking about I'm like, most <sighs> Netflix put him out. He does, like, he's, I'm just going to make a bunch of movies with my friends. I don't care if you like it. Or what was the one where he was his, he was himself and his sister? Jack and Jill. Yeah, Awful. terrible. Terrible. That kind of, like, signaled the... It could have been great. About that's my boy with Andy Samberg. Yes. Jack and Jill kind of was, like, the end of him as the big, big... Oh, Stop. that's my boy was great, I think. 
The right, movie. Eric? You're wrong. <laughs> no. Oh, analyze uh, analyze this. There's an analyze that with Dak Nicholson. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, with Billy. Him Crystal. and uh, Nicholson were really great together. Yep. Click. It wasn't click analyze terrible. this, John. It was anger management. Anger management was that? Was it called? Yes, that's yeah. What, yeah, that's analyze this is thing, something yeah. with uh, I think Jimmy Kahn. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's Robert De Niro and Billy Crystal. Oh, okay. There you go. I knew it was somebody with a godfather. Robert De Niro. I never heard You've of never that, seen that name. Uh, neither have I. Yeah. Yeah. He's new. He just came out. <laughs> He's no. just one of those, you know, never will be. I love De Niro <laughs> and Bad Grandpa. Woo-hoo-hoo. Go check that out. He goes for it. I love Robert De Niro in the... Meet the Parents oh, series. Yeah. I, th- I think he's awesome. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. I never thought he could play comedy, <laughs> but he did. Well, he wasn't because He was, wasn't comedic. He was... Right, but it was so well written. Right. Locked in. That's yeah. a comedy. No, he it is a comedy. He's it's, not being funny. It's called though. satire. He's, he's perfect. He plays that character yeah. perfectly. But Don't it's mess such with a the Italian dad. written script. Oh, my God. When the cat, when the ashes fall, and the cat's... <laughs> <laughs> Never laugh, sorry. And the cat's going towards the ashes, too, you know. I'll walk Uh-oh, out. I'm sorry we brought up the cat. Yeah, first you're meowing. Hey, we, 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 yeah, we're getting cool. We got about another five or six Last minutes, time you uh, did uh, Catwoman. Could robot I know what you're up to. I, I think you brought up oh, the ashes scene. What led up to that is just this awful, cringe-worthy <laughs> poem he reads about his mother dying of cancer. He caught it. Right before that happened. Yeah. And it, it just sets it up perfectly. Well, we've just hit a soft spot with, uh, you know, Gonzo's cat died. And the last 10 minutes, we're turning over to him solo. He said, no, so I'm going to give it read. I'm gonna give it to Eric. Eric can do the 10 minutes on no, my cat. No, you're going to do it. On you, my you're cat. You're going to obey. You're going to, today, you're <laughs> going to obey. We're going to give you the 10 minutes to <sighs> grieve robot. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> We'll be right here. You know you want it. I have them in my bag. Do you have his ashes? No, it's... Because I've got it's I, I've got to use the uh, facilities myself. This okay. could save me some time. Well, last time we talked about uh, placenta. This time we can talk about rigor mortis. <laughs> Is he in the... You have the bag with him? I've yeah, checked, I got the bag. Uh, honestly, I, I did check the bag to make sure he wouldn't do that. He, he's he's alive! Him. It's a miracle! Because you do, when you take your your pet to be cremated, you do put it in the bag, you know? Well, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to bury him with my dogs. How many dogs did you have? Three. And they all died? Yeah, I'm 40. I thought, how long have you lived on Elm Street? What dog have you known that lives 40 years? No, I live off Elm Street. Except for Clifford the Big Red Dog. You mean you have some place where you go and bury these dogs, like Pet Cemetery? Yeah, my backyard at my house. How, at your house? How long have you lived at this house? I mean, I'm just kidding. You your wife's I'm house? I'm just kidding about that. I didn't so, know. This sounds like some Stephen King-ish type No, of, I would uh, never do that. Waste of an hour no, and a half. I pay the 500 to the vet so they can upcharge me to make some money on my grieving status. Now we've got morbid, uh, uh, Eric. Hey, Eric. Well, I mean, th- I think that helps the grieving process. To be morbid? Humor. Yeah. Humor is everything with grieving. Are there any dead pet movies that we can recommend that Gonzo uh, might alleviate his grief? John, uh, you're going to be in it. I don't know if there were, if it would alleviate his grief, Marley and me. <laughs> oh, that would not help at all. No, we're about to be weakened at Hopwoods in a minute. Was that a slacker? That would be a slacker movie, wouldn't Yeah, it? Bernie was a slacker. Well, Bernie was dead. He didn't do crap. Bernie. <laughs> it was a good weekend, though. <laughs> Another great actor. Um, what's his name? Not not the... Sl- we're talking about slacker movies. What do you think of Adam Sandler as an actor, Eric? What do I think of Adam Sandler as an actor? I Until I saw Punch Drunk Love, I thought he... Did, again, like Pauly Shore, he had one trick, and he did that one trick very well. But then I saw Punch Drunk Love, and I'm like, okay, he can act. And then you see, uh, you see him in Anger Management, and he literally goes toe to toe with Nicholson. Yeah. So 
you're like, okay, he he does have that ability, and then Uncut Gems just blown away by his performance. I'll have to see. That. I I still don't even know how. I don't even think he got nominated for Best Actor. No, he got snubbed. And that that's a travesty. Uh. For him to not even be nominated, especially when I when I felt he should have won for that role, it's an amazing film and just brilliantly done. Yeah, I mean, I've heard nothing but good things about it. Um, he's done some garbage. You know, the replacements was awful. There's no. It reason. had Gene Hackman. In it, huh? It's just bad. Though. It's like all right. Uh, uh, yeah. You are right yourself. Do you have any comments about Adam Sandler? Yeah, I think he's a great actor, and he's hilarious, and he's from Central High, baby. Woo! And he watches, listens to the morning show, you told me. Yep, he's a big fan of me, uh, Kyle, <laughs> and uh, Peter White. He actually is a fan of Peter White? More me and Kyle, but yeah. He was so on he our only podcast. Listens to it on, on the no, people just listen to hate us, which is fine, because you still, you still listen to us, so we'll take that. Did I, you go to Central High, Kyle? I did. Of course, dude. Graduated in oh, 2010. Okay. Who do you think this is? Oh, it's Ragnus. Well, I went to West High School. No kidding. You Lovely. were the evil empire to us. The Central oh, we High. feel the same dude, you, We didn't even know who you were. Like, we don't by, think about West. Well, yes, by the time, you know. Uh, Your Honor. What Central used to be the Catholic High School has taken over, you know, as power. Not Trinity. anymore. Trinity. They used to be called Bishop Barrett. Well, Brad Trinity's Hillary. always been good at uh, basketball, and they still are. Well, here's the thing about... Central had a hell of a... Well, West had a good uh, one for some reason. Private years. schools can recruit people, whereas... Um, Did you say West made a good run? <laughs> what, that, what? They may have, but uh, a public school, you have to live in your district, whereas a private school, you can bring kids in. Right. Well, Eric, uh, we are going to uh, be uh, wrapping up early so he can do his... I mean, his... He can mo properly mourn his cat robot, but always wonderful to hear from you. What is your yes, review of, uh, to be of Friday? Or Gonzo, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you, Eric. And my review this week in honor of the NCAA tournament starting is the sports documentary Hoop Dreams Great that movie. chronicles four years in the life of two inner city youths as they go through high school and try to achieve their dream of making the NBA. And it changed the rules of how they award the documentary Oscar because it didn't get nominated. Snubbed. Yes, and Roger Ebert says it w is the greatest documentary he's ever seen. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Eric, thank you so much. We'll he's talking yep, to you thank soon. Thank you for having me. Bye, Eric. Have a good day, Gonzo and Kyle. Bye, Eric. Bye. Now I'm going to X, Bye, guys. Him, X him up. Kyle, do you have anything to say before we turn the studio well, over? Kyle's going to be part of a dramatic uh, reenactment. No, he's, he's Wait, leaving. Wait, we're reenacting your cat time? We're going to talk about the last conversation. No, I'm not, I'm not leaving you two alone together. So well, Kyle, are you leaving with me so he can do his singing? I, I, no, you I were going to do so. the part of robot. No, I'm, I'm not. Oh, d is, is this all right with you, Kyle? I don't want to do your dead cat's meows. Oh, so there was going to be meowing. Yeah, at the end. And you wouldn't let me do it? You did it. Um, John, if you would like to take my role. First of all, I'm not doing the bit. When you guys leave, I'm just going to talk about Hopwood. No, you're not going to do anything. Cause then you, they, I'll have to take the birthday party show. You look like you're, you're in a here. rookie Wait, of the my year. Birthday. And you can throw a fastball 95 miles an hour now with your arm. I can't throw a fastball for five miles an hour. Nope. I will just say I, I met you once, Robot. Are you a lefty? No, I'm a, a righty. Um, you were just kind of hanging out on the couch? No, I'm not going to do that b the, yeah. the thing anymore. Why not? It's just making fun of me. We're not making know. fun of you. We were going to let you, you do what you wanted tone? to do. I don't think Norm would be pleased with you right now. I don't. I think that you're I being a male don't. B I T C A. I don't right think now. Norm's friends would be pleased with you either. Uh, um, do you want to sing your song? Robot? No. I, I like, do. Thank you for letting me scratch your head. I want to do a, a, a reading for on Eric, though. Um, if, if no, you you're not mind. going to do any readings. But if the point was we ended the show early so you could do your thing. You could sing your song to your cat. I'll do it to Brandon then. <sighs> All right. Uh, Brandon, I see travel. No, in no, your no. If you're not going to do your thing, the show's over right now. Show's then do it. Do your thing. Why do you get to do your thing all the time? 
because it's my show. Why is he being such an ass? He said it's Kyle's show. show. No, I lost that. It was uh, till uh, a minute ago. Why are you being? But it's okay to sing Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> Yeah, why don't you sing your song for your cat? Fine, I will. Okay. And you can meow. Uh, uh, I'm not going to meow. I don't like that version, though. I don't want to replicate. I, I didn't really know Robot. I will say one thing about Robot was he was a token of my wife and I's love. Yeah. We bought him when we first met. He was there for us when we loved him. I mean, when we needed him. He always knew when you needed him. And his last thing he did was he got up and he mustered to me. And he said, "Yeah, said yeah, the, uh, you know, losing a cat is uh, terrible. You must have had him for years. A yeah. pet, a beloved pet. He's it's ten terrible. Year, ten years old. He had a lot of life to live. Um, We're not I here to the make pandemic. fun of that. He got COVID and he never really recovered. Oh, that's sad. But for the listeners out there, um, if you have a cat and you have loose grocery bags, um, put it in a drawer. Or he a, did. Ha- Why did you bring that up? He had a bag addiction." He was addicted to eating plastic Hannaford bags. Uh, so we thought we f- we thought we got him off it. The other cat, Seamus, started doing it. Brought it back into the house. Then they I caught him doing paper. And then I tried to stop him. And then uh, I I punished him. I said, "You can't be doing paper because it's a gateway to plastic." And what did he do? I caught Seamus eating plastic so i instantly put him into rehab he's good now but then robot goes into the vet they do an x-ray and what do you think i found john plastic bags with hannaford on it how could they see hannaford so you can't really help you, can't you can lead a cat to water but you can't make them drink it I've never heard of any animal eating plastic bags. Dude, it's a big thing now. It's different generations, John. I don't know what cats did back in your time. Right Eight now, mice. there's a huge Hannaford Chipmunks. bag. I mean, you got to get a clue, bro. Like, this is what's going on out there in the cat world. Like, this is why Bite I wanted to do the whole show on brilliant. cats today. But you hijacked it with slacker movies. No, uh, you intended to hijack the show because we said uh, at the end of last year. My cat we died, do John. And he died from an addiction to plastic. I didn't want to say it. I was going to say he died of old age. But no, he died at a young age. He ate plastic again. True, and what happens is when you get off plastic and you get better, you can overdose on it by just doing a little bit more. So here's the thing, John. Um, when your cat eats too much plastic, don't worry about me. Um, they can't digest the plastic, unfortunately. It gets That's in their true. Colon. It gets everywhere. It just it doesn't digest. So um, did they have to do surgery? No, they well they knocked them out. I couldn't afford anesthesia, so they got a boxer in there, and then they manually <laughs> took it out. And then what do they find? Hannaford. And if you ask me. I saw a little bit of market basket in there. So Did he's go got Han- multiple people. You, you oh go to God. Hanford's? I go to Hanford's. I went to market basket once. Market basket baskets are and really cheap. And what did he do? He, he, true. And I like to put them in the cabinet them. because I like to take a, a bag out. You, we have this thing called the bag lady. You take it out and you use it for things. Bag lady. Yeah, in the closet. Guess who found the bag lady? Robot found it. No, Seamus. Oh, well, Seamus is an instigator. Have you addressed, like, get a... Keep up with Seamus. Do you even love Seamus? No. Are you going to sing this song? No. Why not? Do you want us to hold each other for the last five minutes? What was the song? <laughs> Would you like us to sing it? I hate Hannaford. It, well, you know. it, it should have never left Shop and Save. I, I know it's not Hannaford. Was it Shop Shop and Save? It used to be. Maybe but they make, them, they make them so accessible now. like The bags? Yeah, like they're everywhere. Again, double bags for a piece of chicken. You know, would so you cute. like double bag? You see flying all over the parking lot. Like, get a grip on these. You know things. what they call a plastic bag caught in branches of leaves in autumn in England? Don't. Which is knickers? Which knickers means underpants? Not going right. there. But sure. I would tell you, yeah, underwear. Do you know. witches wear underwear? No, yeah, say underwear. Well, witches do wear knickers. I okay. guess. You know. Say underwear. Undergarments. Well, knickers means under women's underwear in right. England. Yeah. I, just, I don't know what. I have a list, so I'm not going there. 
<laughs> but my point is, you see a bag flying in the air. So your cat. Grab it from the air. Put it in your car. Do the responsible thing. Don't just let it fly around. Your cat cats died from there. eating plastic bags. Is that what you're telling us? Hannaford. No, you're talking the plastic bags. I'm Let's suing Hannaford. Hannaford. Yes. Yes, that's what he's telling you, John. Suing Hanford. I'm so not the one I like. But you're the one who had the plastic bags in your house. Why didn't you just remove all the plastic bags? Because you thought he had it under control, John. You just didn't have it. It's like if he's if he's like addicted to cocaine, and well, we'll keep the cocaine here in 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 the medicine cabinet. He was fine with cocaine. Still get up there. (laughs) He was fine with cocaine. It never really over. Good anesthetic. Yeah, he's fine on it. Um, But the bags. Did he croak after they pulled them out? He can croak. He died. Okay, he's not a frog. Well, how many lives was he on? He was obviously he had his had last two one. Lives. This no, was his eleventh life. It was nine. Yeah, so ironically zero. enough, that he's is a gone. real thing. He's not coming back. No, he's gone, baby, gone. Because I know people that their dogs have come back to them, but those he, are dogs. That happened with my uh, yeah, and then what my happens? First pet, actually. They come back mean and they murder you. No, that's not true. Yeah, that's that sounds that's like cemetery. a, a Polly Shore's new movie. Oh, that sounds awesome. Mm, my point is, I saw a bag out there on Elm Street. Just and you just brought it at home, like to tea. No, I <laughs> took it and I put it in the receptacle. Here, a, do you ever hear of catnip and stuff like that? The cat could have played with that. He oh moved. no, we'll give him a plastic bag. Look, some people have their vices. Um, you have some people eat this in human. The house. It shouldn't be plastic. Bags. I know, John. This is before he got addicted to it. He brought it in from an outside source. I'm telling you. Did he have a connection? Oh, Obviously, it's Seamus, the other cat. He's out. He's an no, outdoor no. cat. I saw a German Shepherd walking around. You did in the alley, yeah. Go oh well, well, we uh, yeah, went in doubt. Blame the crowds, huh? Well, <laughs> wow, you've made about nineteen racial slurs today. Could you just, 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 just uh, g- groups that are uh, on top. Never, you know, anybody that's uh, listen. If I Germans have a robust this is supposed economy, to be my ten minutes. Well, oh, you blew them. You didn't want to sing the damn song. I didn't song. blow anything. Except the bag flowing in the wind. If there's a bag blowing in the wind, do the right thing. Brandon, can you zoom in on me, it's please? It's not my fault if you were an irresponsible cat parent and brought the, this, this kind of catnip into here? the house. Thank you. Do the right thing. If you see a Hannaford bag especially, I'll double the reward for those. I'm going to get those SOBs. If he has see, no money, folks. John, this is my... If you get a bag, email me. I'll give you 25 cents for every Hannaford plastic bag you find because I'm going to rid the streets of these things. I'll be damned if my cat's life Dot was is in vain. vain. This is like nah, man. All right. We're not okay. there for nothing. Uh, put the camera on me. I'm about to sign off. Uh, it's, you know, it's like uh, we have somebody with a Victoria Sullivan syndrome won't take the responsibility for themselves. What is VSS? Had the plastic bags in the house and the cat did itself, man. I don't have VSS. Well, what can you do? We will see you next week. It's going to be Kyle's <laughs> birthday. We're going to take all those plastic bags that you bring in and we're going to gag Gonzo. Oh my Bye. God.